as with wine, you, you, you need to have a, a proper glass to drink it out of. Um, any beer that's actually worth drinking in the first place should never ever be drunk directly out of a bottle. I mean, now, I've been seen on fishing boats, you know, <laughs> at times, <laughs> swigging out of the bottle, so there's always, you know, that, uh, that exception. Um, but uh, aside from situations uh, like that, really, you're going to miss more than half of what's going on there if you're going to do that. Um, you know, the head on the beer is important. The aroma of the beer is very important, uh, et cetera. So um, there, are beer, there are glasses that are designed for beer. Uh, when I do beer dinners, and I've done a great many of them, uh, we almost always use white wine glasses because they're great tasting glasses. You can get the beer around the glass. You can get the aromas, et cetera. Um, and so that's what uh, we're, we're pretty much working with for, you know, for, uh, uh, for glassware. Now, when it comes to actually how to drink a beer, it depends, are you drinking or are you tasting? If you're drinking, you just go ahead and drink it. If you're tasting, you really do want to get it around the glass, uh, pick up the aroma first. You always want to make sure that you don't serve the beer overly chilled. Um, most American beers, you know, even craft beers, are designed so they at least taste good coming out of the ref straight out of the refrigerator. But many of them will actually taste better in another 10 minutes. You know, let it warm up a little bit and give it an extra five degrees warmer. Um, nobody else in the world, except for Americans and perhaps Australians, want ice cold beer. That that's like an oxymoron. Nobody wants it because you know you make something ice cold, it numbs the taste buds, and you can't taste it. Uh, so Americans have the same problem with wine. Red wine is usually served too warm, like room temperature, and white wine is usually served too cold, straight out of the fridge. In either case, you're losing the best of what the wine has to offer. It's the same with beer. Um, I'm not saying that beer wants, you know, you don't want to drink the beer at room temperature, but you probably don't, if it's been sitting in a, in a, uh, in a tub of ice, you know, for a half an hour, and it's at 32 degrees, there's no way you're really gonna taste that. Well, basically, when you're, gonna, when you're looking to match beer with food, it is similar, uh, the principles are similar in some ways uh, to what they would be for wine. That is, you don't want one thing to overwhelm the other. That's where you gotta start out, is balancing the impact on your palate. So you're not gonna take you know, a big heavy stout, for example, and put it with delicate white fish that you clearly won't be able to taste after you've had, you know, such a big beer. Uh, or the other way around, to put some relatively light, delicate beer up against, you know, uh, uh, a really, you know, huge, uh, uh, hugely flavored dish. Once you kind of have that part worked out, then I like to work on what I call the flavor hook, which is the part of the beer's flavor that links up with some part of the food's flavor. Um, so it may be, for example, caramelization. You know, if you've got a really nice, uh, 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 you know, dark char on a steak, you may want to use the caramelization or roast uh, in a beer to kind of grab onto that flavor. Uh, a brown ale, for example, you know, can approach a steak that's cooked that way in a completely different way than a, than a wine would. You know, the wine approaches with fruit and some tannin, et cetera, which is in, almost entirely in opposition to what's going on there, whereas I can approach with caramelization and roast and chocolatey flavors that directly link in to the flavors of the steak. So, whereas wine is very good at doing contrast and then sometimes some harmony, I think beer is tremendous at harmony, and we have a much, much wider range of flavor to work with in beer than you do on the wine side, which is simply a fact. It's not saying that, uh, that wine is not complex and interesting, et cetera. I love wine. But you know, if you look at the, uh, at the biggest stout all the way out to the lightest wheat beer, right there you have a much wider range of flavor than you have with uh, most other drinks. So there's a lot to work with. Well, there, there are certainly benefits. I mean, uh, even now, finally, you know, the uh, US RDA guidelines tell you that it is better for you to have a beer or two every day than not to have a beer or two every day. Teetotalers are unwell. <laughs> so, <laughs> statistically, no matter where you look in the world, they are unwell. So, uh, you know, it, it is best to have a beer or two every day. Uh, now, if the beer has yeast in it, 
You can go and buy brewer's yeast and tiny little expensive nasty tablets in a health food store, or you can drink a bottle of wheat beer, for example, every day, which uh, usually has yeast in it, which is, has all your B vitamins, etc. And many of these beers that have yeast are actually prescribed, you know, one a day by doctors in Europe saying, hey, this, you know, should have one of these every day and it's going to be better for you, uh, et cetera. So I think that there certainly is a big upside when it comes to health. Obviously, the downside would come if you're simply uh, going out and drinking, uh, you know, a six pack every day, you know, you're going to get fat um, and uh, that's not going to be good for you. But beer, people have all these various concepts. They think that beer is more fattening than wine, which is patently untrue. And anybody who's a nutritionist or whatever else can lay it all out there for you. Why? You know, very low residual sugar, you know, et cetera. Uh, people talk about carbs, you know, and things like that, whereas the carbohydrates have already largely been eaten by the yeast. Um, what's really where the calories are, you know, in, uh, uh, in beer, as in with wine, is, you know, in the alcohol. And, uh, you know, your, the glass of wine and, you know, the, the, a larger glass of beer have about the same amount of alcohol and about the same calories. So the whole idea of the beer gut actually, I think, has more to do with the fries you know, or whatever else that people are more likely to eat with the beer than it has to do with the, the beer itself. But, uh, you know, we drink lots of beer and we're doing just fine. So. <laughs>